Ellie Main of Rooster Teeth, well, used to be with Rooster Teeth, has also just left the company. If you don't know who Ellie is, let me show you. And let me also mention that as with everyone who has left the company or been laid off, I absolutely wish her the best in whatever future projects she wants to be involved with moving forward. Hopefully it all goes well for her. Here's the news, though. Ellie Main is a former creative producer for Rooster Teeth. She's a writer, director, editor, and camera operator for The Lab, as well as the host slash star of Skill Tree, a new RT production where she trains and preps for the inevitable and oncoming apocalypse. She also became the host of Ruby Rewind for volume six of the show. So there you go. The host of Ruby Rewind for volume six won't be the host for volume seven. And with, uh, with the new writer they have for volume seven, one of the new writers... I think maybe uh, that's going to work out well for her. I'm very nervous. Uh, I, apparently, they did bring on multiple new writers. Only one of them is really fanatical, in my opinion, to put it lightly. But um, let's take a look at Ellie's statement here. She, of course, had some parting words. And I actually, unlike, unlike the other video I made on Rooster Teeth and uh, the four people who had left, uh, I haven't actually read this one yet. So we're going to read this together. Give me one moment. A little unorganized. There's so much news today, guys. I got stuff all over the place. Thank you for bearing with me, though. Here's the post. Let's take a look. So it reads... Uh, oh, boy. Hold up. This is quite a doozy of a post. <laughs> Barely fits on my screen. All right. It reads... Hi, everyone. This is my last week as an employee at Rooster Teeth. To avoid any speculation, I was not a part of the layoffs that happened last week. Rather, this was a decision that I came to after a great deal of soul-searching, a slight mental breakdown, and a lot of tears. The truth is, a huge part of me does not want to close this chapter of my life. Working at Rooster Teeth was something I never imagined I would do, let alone participate in an on-camera capacity. I will always be grateful to Bernie for seeing something in me and championing me to become a member of the RT cast and core group, through this experience, I've met and fallen in love with some of the people who I know I will know forever. The people who have been there with me in my highest highs and lowest lows of my life. I have had so many moments of joy, mental snapshots of absolute incredulity that I would be lucky enough to gain experience and grow and learn and have so much fun at the same time. For example, what the heck am I doing at sniper school? And I've been able to meet some of you, the community that makes this place a company. I am fundamentally a different person because of this place. But there is no rose without a thorn. A Ruby reference there. Well, I mean, it's not just a Ruby reference. Anyways, a Torchwick, Torchwick Ruby. Okay, anyways, I'm sorry. But there is no rose without a thorn. When you are fortunate enough to be granted a platform, something weird begins to happen in your heart with vulnerability, authenticity, and courage in my experience. I began to tie my own sense of worthiness to my opportunities and achievements and began to live from a place of scarcity. And all of that led to shame. Interesting. Shame is the great destroyer of vulnerability and creativity requires vulnerability. I am super proud of the work I was able to do here, and I would have loved to do more. I'm at a point in my life where I, uh, excuse me, I'm at a point in my life where if I don't take a massive step of faith in the direction I want my creative life to go, I might never do so. The content I so desperately want to make simply doesn't align with the Rooster Teeth style and comedy voice that has long been established, and that is totally okay. Oh, interesting, we're gonna go back to that one. I am scared, terrified even, but excited to venture into an unknown, uh, into, I'm sorry guys, it's a, it's a weird angle for me reading this post. I am scared, terrified even, but excited to venture into the unknown a bit and to pursue my own personal projects that I'll be updating you all on as I go, if you want to stick with me. Rooster Teeth will always be a formative part of my life and I'll be forever grateful. Maybe you still will see me there from time to time, heart. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Give me one second. I'm going to put that page on this uh, screen now so I can look at it here. Uh, I just won't have it pulled up uh, on, on, on the video now. But let's talk about some of this. Specifically, where she says, The content I so desperately want to make simply doesn't align with the Rooster Teeth style and comedy voice that has long been established. And that is totally okay. The implication there to me, and maybe I'm reading this wrong, is that Rooster Teeth is changing the style of their content. She no longer... Uh, the content that she wants to make doesn't align with the new Rooster Teeth style. That's really interesting. Especially because, as we mentioned earlier on in this video, she was brought on to host Ruby Rewind in Volume 6, which was the most recent volume. So if she enjoyed that, I would think maybe she'd want to still work with RT and, you know, 
maybe do it for volume seven if they would have offered her to be a host now it sounds like she of course was also involved in other works behind the scenes uh with rt and, and not behind the scenes as well some other you know public appearances and stuff like that so i don't know too much about that end. i know more about the ruby end as you guys know that's most of my knowledge of rt is on the ruby side of things to be fair uh i've been looking more at rt as a whole and things like that as well but definitely my original knowledge of rt actually to be honest my original knowledge of rooster teeth here's a little trivia for you guys really quick is uh red vs blue seasons one and two when i was in high school there was a i and oh, man what was this thing called way back in the day an eye touch an ipod touch i think it was like the iphone that wasn't the phone but it looked like the phone but it was an ipod i think it was the, the ipod touch i'm pretty sure that was what it was called i found one and couldn't find whose it was looked really hard to get it back to them no luck that ipod touch had a uh, red vs blue seasons one and two on it so i actually knew about rooster teeth really early on but after season two i didn't have any more because the ipod touch only had up to season two and i kind of never followed it from that point on and then all these years later i uh found ruby well not all these years later but you know a few years later i found ruby and there you go so that was just a little bit of a uh, Information you certainly didn't ask or probably need to know, but there you go. So, you know, she leaves on a good note. She says that maybe you'll still see her from time to time working on things with rooster teeth. Don't know how likely that is, but she wishes them well. Uh, she says she was not a part of the layoffs, and this decision came after a great deal of soul searching and a slight mental breakdown and a lot of tears. So she wishes to pursue her own projects, and this lines up a lot with uh, the other creators we saw leaving Rooster Teeth that were apparently not a part of the layoffs. They just left very coincidentally around the same time, which is odd. But a number of those people, big names too, were leaving to pursue their own projects um, or direct more time to projects that they had already started but didn't have enough time to allocate there because of their work with Rooster Teeth, whatever it is. Now we have another one, her. Uh, Ellie, excuse me. Uh, Ellie is now leaving as well. To pursue her own things it's just interesting to me i mean you know people can sit here saying there's nothing wrong with the company and i'm only leaving because i want to pursue other things but if pursuing those other things is more enticing than staying at the company you've worked with and all these people are all leaving around the same time and there's all this bad news coming out in 2019 i can't help but feel that this is not just a coincidence that there is something greater going on behind the scenes and at this point man there's been so much bad news with rt in 2019 i'm starting to wonder if rt is going to be around in 2020 I wonder if by the end of 2020, RT is going to be gone. Who knows? It could be. I am hearing rumors that AT&T is getting really sick of what's going on with RT and Warner. Uh, not not Warner as much as RT specifically, but there is a chance that they cut losses. If, if RT is not profitable after they acquired them, don't think they'd want to hang on to that. So, you know, some of the IP is worthwhile to hang on to. That's where it gets debatable. Maybe they could sell off certain sections of RT and uh, keep some of the IP in some ways. There's a lot of ways that this could all go down. Um, but let me go back to her statement here. I don't want to speculate too much in this video because, to be honest, guys, there's another Rooster Teeth video that I want to make today. Gray issued a statement earlier uh, talking about some of the... I didn't read the full statement yet, to be fair. It looks like he's acknowledging some of the criticism that's being leveled against him uh, and some of the claims that are being leveled against him. I don't know. We're going to take a look at that in the next video. So let me start wrapping this one up and... Uh, one final skim through here from her statement. Talks about wanting to pursue other projects. Grateful uh, for her chance to work at RT. Grateful to work with Bernie. Um, all right. Proud of the work she was able to do there. The, yeah, this part's interesting, though. Let, let's focus on this really quick one, one more time. When you are fortunate enough to be granted a platform, something weird begins to happen in your heart with vulnerability, authenticity, and courage, in my experience. I began to tie my own sense of worthiness to my opportunities and achievements and began to live from a place of scarcity and all that led to shame i don't understand what she's getting at there i really don't shame is the great destroyer of vulnerability and creativity requires vulnerability interesting i i, I it must be a very personal statement i guess i can't really uh attribute what she's discussing there with any specific events i don't know i don't know anyways start wrapping this one up i don't actually have shout outs for this video uh because the video I'm releasing before this video isn't uploaded yet. It just finished processing. I got to upload it. You might have actually heard it finished processing in the middle of this video where there was like a, a little ring. If you guys could hear that, I don't know. Maybe you could. Anyways, here's the merch store, guys. If you're interested, we have the I Stand With Vic shirt and mug. Of course, the iconic designs you all hopefully know about now. Link in the description if you're interested in that. And the Oxo Kazan mug, a little more personal to me, a saying I like from the Sheen Gumi. If you don't know about it, the description tells you all about it. 
multiple colors for all this stuff. And again, the link is in the description if you would like to take a look. Of course, we also have a Patreon if you're more interested in supporting the channel that way. But just sharing the videos, liking the videos, commenting, that all helps as well. So don't feel forced into anything. Just wanted to close this video out there. So now I'm going to wrap this up and get to work on the next RT video. We're talking about Gray next. Hopefully I'll have that out in a few hours. I'll see you then. Peace.